Welcome uh, every, everybody. You know, it's, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, also Janos, uh, the speaker today, Janos Kertes, who is a, a new member, new uh, member of our community. Uh, currently, Janos is a head of the Department of Network and Data Sciences Central European University in, in Vienna. As you know, this is the, 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 the former uh, Budapest Institute of Technology that used to be in Budapest and uh, now is, mo is moving to Vienna. He, he, but he started his career as a PhD from Edward University in Budapest. Then he worked uh, for the Unga uh, Hungarian Academy of Science. He worked at the Cologne University and the Technische University in Munich. And uh, before moving to his uh, current positions where he has been uh, ever since. Uh, of course, uh, you know, Janos is a prominent uh, figure, a leader, internationally recognized for his many contributions uh, in, uh, in statistical physics, including, uh, in, including uh, equilibrium and non equilibrium uh, uh, um, and, and social science applications with, with uh, um, many, many interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary topics. He has been on editorial boards of many journals, including Journal of, of, of Physics A, Physica A, Fluctuation and Noise, and, and others. Uh, yeah, he has been, uh, his work has been recognized by, by many uh, recognitions, including the Hungarian Academy Award, the Science College Award of the Ministry of Education and the Culture, the, the Ceceni State Prize, the, and he has been a nominated distinguished professor by, by, the, 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 by the Finland University and by Korean University. And, uh, and of course, he is a member of uh, many academies, including the Hungarian Academic of Science and an external member of the Finnish Academy of Science. And, and most of us is a friend of us. So without further ado, you know, uh, you know make it too long. You know, thank you, Janos, for, for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you, Akila. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Let me uh, share my screen. Okay, so uh, today I would like to speak about uh, modeling the network of social interactions. And uh, this is a topic which uh, has interested people uh, ever. Uh, and in science, it has uh, come up already early in the 20th century, so there were uh, predecessors of, of uh, social network science. Uh, one can mentioned Georg Simmel and uh, Jacob Morino, but the real change in the attitude of uh, uh, social scientists uh, came uh, around 1970 with the so-called Harvard Revolution in sociology, where uh, due to Harrison White, uh, a shift uh, from the attributor to relational studies happened. And uh, it is, a very important uh, uh, field of study for many reasons. One reason is uh, to understand who we are. That is one of the, the basic questions of all social sciences. But there are also uh, more practical questions which are related to uh, such networks like um, epidemiology, which is extremely important in our days or uh, spreading of innovations, or formation of political majorities, and many, many more. So I don't think that there is much more need to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to underline the importance of uh, uh, the understanding of uh, how the network of social interactions is formed and how it functions. But uh, what do we talk about? What, what is a network? The nodes are quite easy to identify. The nodes are we, people. But what is a link? And in fact, what a link is <clears throat> depends on uh, what we are interested in. For example, if we are interested in epidemics, then uh, two people uh, riding the same bus are connected because they may infect each other. But this is totally different from what we would call a socially relevant relationship. Uh, 
everyone has a feeling about what a socially relevant relationship means, but it is not easy to define it. And I usually refer to a conversation I had with uh, Robin Dunbar, uh, who characterized uh, this socially relevant relationship in the following way. If two people uh, meet accidentally at an airport, for example, uh, they recognize each other and have no problem uh, to carry out a, a, disc a, a conversation because they know each other enough that they know about each other's circumstances and problems and so on, so they can immediate, immediately um, jump into a, such a talk. So this is mainly what I'm interested in, uh, the network of uh, socially relevant uh, relationships. And um, uh, social sciences have discussed this problem at length. And there are uh, theories about um, how links are formed. And I think uh, we as network scientists and complexity scientists uh, have to listen to them and have to uh, study what they, what they have discovered. So about link formation, uh, there are two main mechanisms described in social sciences. One is what is called a triadic closure which is uh, easiest explained by the saying that friends of friends get easily friends. So here is this little illustration, which tells us if A is a person and B is a person and C is a person and A and B as well as uh, A and C are closely related, have a friendship or a socially relevant relationship, then there is a high probability that B and C will also establish such a relationship. And uh, in addition to that, there is what is called a focal closure, which again goes under a, a symbolic uh, quotation, like birds of a feather flock together. <clears throat> that means that, uh, that people who have some common features like gender, age, interest, religion, race, and so on, there can be many, many more, uh, they are attracted to each other and there is a high probability that they establish an, uh, a link. This is what is called homophily. So homophily is a major drive for, uh, uh, for uh, making links. But links are not only formed, they also disappear. And there could be many reasons for that. One is that... <coughs> that relationships simply fade away. If we don't put enough uh, uh, energy and time into a relationship, then ultimately the relationship vanishes, that it fades away. There are other mechanisms as well. For example, a radical step breaking up. And finally, a node can be deleted from a network for example, due to the fact that the person dies. So <clears throat> we have here this dynamic process that links are formed and, and they, also, um, they are also removed from the network. A further important input from uh, social sciences is uh, the structure of egocentric networks. And this goes back to Robin Dunbar's uh, social brain hypothesis, which tells us that it is based on the fact what I just mentioned, that, that relationships must be maintained, otherwise they fade away. So uh, that, needs, that, that, that needs resources. It needs brain capacity. It needs time. It needs energy and so on. And that gives a limit for such socially relevant contacts. And according to Dunbar, this is around 150. <clears throat> this is the famous Dunbar number, which is of course just an average. There are fluctuations. Some people have much more, others have much less uh, uh, socially relevant contacts. But on the average, 
This is a characteristic size of the egocentric networks. And it immediately tells us that in spite of the popularity of the well-deserved popularity of scale-free networks, such networks uh, of socially relevant contacts uh, are not scale-free because there is a scale, namely the Dunbar number in, in this context. Uh, Dunbar has a, a more developed theory about the, the further structure of, uh, uh, of this uh, egocentric network. Uh, we all know that, that uh, there are different levels of intensity of our, our contacts, and that has a structure according to Dunbar as illustrated here. A further theory, <clears throat> <clears throat> a further theory uh, uh, is related to uh, what I call here local versus uh, global structure. And this is uh, the famous strength of, a weak, of, of the weak ties hypothesis. Uh, uh, this was put forward by Mark Granovetter in the early 70s. And this is just a quotation from his famous paper, which has got some 70,000 citations. The strength, of a weak, the strength of a tie is a probably linear combination of the amount of time, the emotional intensity, the intimacy, mutual confiding, and the reciprocal services which characterize the tie. This is the definition of the tie strength. And I you cannot resist to make always this remark uh, that uh, I'm somewhat puzzled by what the linear combination of emotional intensity and intimacy could be. Nevertheless, we all understand what this is about. It, de it defines the intensity of a relationship. And having defined this um, uh, uh, intensity, Granovetter goes uh, forward and um, puts uh, and, and defines or uh, formulates his hypothesis, which is as follows. The stronger the tie between A and B, the larger the proportion of individuals as to whom both are tied. In other words, uh, if the tie, the link between A and B is very strong, then they share a lot of acquaintances, and if it is weak, then they don't. And this is a local property of the network we are studying, but it has severe global macro scale consequences. Namely, as a result of this property, society consists of strongly wired communities linked by weak ties. And that is the origin of the title of that paper, because uh, the consequence is that uh, these communities, which are strongly wired, are linked together. And this way, the entire society is held together by these weak links. So how to, how to check if a network has a Granovetterian structure? Well, there is a so-called percolation test for that. And it is carried out in the following way. One orders the links according to their strengths. The strength is the second strength and so on. And then you eliminate the links one after the other in ascending or descending order. And if you do it in a in a uh, descending order, so first the strongest and then the second strongest and so on, then you take links from the densely wired communities first. And that doesn't destroy the, the network. While if you take out first the weak links, then the network gets early fragmented. So the difference between these two percolation thresholds, which is denoted by delta F here, is a test for the Granovetterian structure. 
and I will get back to that later. So uh, looking around uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, trying to understand how this network could look like uh, and, and uh, studying what uh, social scientists uh, have said, uh, we can put together a list of stylized facts about the network of social interactions. First about the degree distribution. The degree distribution has uh, a shape which we don't know uh, a priori. We have just said that this most probably is not a scale-free network, so it uh, doesn't have a very fat tail. But on the other hand, it is expected to have a peak. Uh, the second um, a property which is widely described in the literature is that uh, we expect that this network has many, many triangles, which is reflected in the clustering coefficient. And this clustering coefficient then decays uh, with uh, increasing degree. We also have degree associativity in the social network, meaning that high degree networks are attracted to high degree networks. So there is a correlation in this sense in the system. And uh, we have also this Granovetterian structure, which is on a, a micro scale simply related, makes a relationship, better to say, uh, between topology and the strength of the ties. And it has then this global consequence. And finally, I would like to mention that we expect that the network has a multi-layer structure. It is a multiplex with overlapping communities. Why? Because we belong to several communities. We have uh, family ties, we have friendships, we have colleagues, uh, we have schoolmates and so on. And all these at different, uh, uh, can, be, can be represented at different uh, layers. And this way we have a multiplex. And of course, since persons belong to several communities, the communities overlap. So uh, these are stylized facts, which uh, uh, we would like to better understand and the model. Uh, what are the data which we can rely on? Uh, so as I said, we, we of course have to study what uh, uh, what uh, sociology has achieved in this respect. We also have a common sense. Everybody has some uh, personal experience related to that network. Last but not least, and this is uh, where our data come from, uh, uh, we have big data. We have big data from many uh, resources, cell phone, CDRs, um, online social networks, uh, uh, radio frequency uh, sensors and so on. And these, uh, these data can be collected and um, used uh, to map out the, the network. So uh, after this introduction, let me come to um, the first uh, uh, result we achieved in this respect, which is, goes very uh, much back in, in time. In 2007, we published this paper uh, proving Granovetter's uh, hypothesis. Uh, in fact, uh, Granovetter's hypothesis is rather plausible, but it is very, very difficult to prove uh, with traditional methods where you use uh, questionnaires and, and uh, methods alike. So using uh, big data, uh, there was a chance to, to prove this hypothesis. And in fact, that's what we did. Uh, we used uh, uh, data from uh, mobile phone data from a European country, uh, which provides us with a weighted communication network. And since uh, mobile phones are used uh, basically by everyone, uh, it gives a good proxy if we map out the links um, of the society by using the mobile phone data. So this gives us a weighted communication network. And in fact, the weights are 
for example, how long do people uh, talk to each other? Uh, or how many times they talk to each other? And these are closely related to the definition of the strength of a tie as given by Granovetter. So we have the weighted network. And the next step is that we should define what a network link overlap is. And this is relatively easy to do. The definition is given here. So OIJ is this uh, so-called uh, link overlap, where NIJ is the number of shared neighbors and KI and KJ is the number, uh, is, is the degrees of uh, uh, node I and J respectively. So uh, this is an illustration of this quantity. You can see if the overlap is zero, then this quantity is zero. And if every uh, neighbor is shared, then it is, it is one. And here is uh, the uh, result of, um, of how the uh, link overlap looks like as a function of uh, the weight. Better to see this is the cumulative weight because that shows us that uh, this relationship, this monotonic relationship, the larger the weight is, uh, the uh, higher is the overlap, is true almost throughout the entire uh, spectrum of the weights, except of the uppermost 5%. And in fact, we understand this uppermost 5% also, because that means that those people talk so much on the phone with each other that they don't have time to talk to anybody else. So that, that uh, uh, means that the number of neighbors is reduced and therefore this overlap is reduced. So altogether, we can say that up to 95%, the Granovetter hypothesis is uh, proved. So uh, as I emphasized, uh, this micro level property, this overlap, the link overlap, uh, related to the uh, link strength is uh, related to macroscopic properties. And here you can see a, a very small part of the, of the network uh, where uh, the link strength is illustrated. And you can see that we have indeed these strongly wired communities and they are connected by the weak links. And here you see the percolation test for it. And indeed, we have this difference in the percolation thresholds, uh, uh, strengthening that the relationship between the micro and macro um, description is established. So we have this delta F larger than zero. So this is uh, an observation. We see that the network uh, has indeed uh, the granulatorian structure. The next question is in the process of understanding that we would like to put forward a model which does have uh, this property. So the model should of course contain dynamic mechanisms. We, we are interested in a, in a dynamic model which produces this structure, but of course we want to keep it as simple as possible. What are the main elements of the, uh, of the uh, model? We have to create links. Uh, and this is done by triadic closure and fo focal closure. We have to uh, take into account somehow this, this uh, element of the need of maintaining the links, which is uh, done here by introducing reinforcement So any link involved in an action gets a weight increment. And finally, we want to have a stationary uh, system and therefore we have to eliminate links somehow, otherwise we just would just produce them. And the simplest way to do it that we eliminate nodes, of course, one can do it in a more sophisticated way by taking into account the real processes. So here is the model. There is a local attachment, a triadic closure element. So if there are two nodes already link, linked, then there is a high probability that the triad is closed and uh, with an initial weight, but the two links which have been in, involved 
uh, get an increment, uh, get a reinforcement. Uh, then uh, we have a global attachment or a focal closure. I should mention here that in contrast to reality, at this stage, we don't consider homophily, uh, just a random uh, choice is, is carried out. And uh, again, with, with an initial uh, value. And then of course, uh, with some probability, we eliminate the nodes in order to have a stationary state. So uh, these are the parameters. Some of them are important, others not so important as usual. And uh, uh, what is extremely important is this reinforcement parameter, which is illustrated in this uh, figure. So this is the uh, simulated model with uh, zero reinforcement. So this is without any uh, reinforcement effect. And then we, if we switch on, the reinforcement, we start seeing a kind of uh, building up a, a, an inhomogeneity. And indeed, these, uh, uh, these uh, communities are formed and they become very strong and, and indeed have a structure as uh, predicted by Granovetter. So we have this uh, weight topology uh, correlation and uh, we can do the percolation test and we see that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the model as uh, indicated already by visual inspection, we do have this, uh, this delta F uh, larger than zero. So the test shows that it has a Granovetterian structure. So this is uh, uh, satisfactory to some extent. However, we know that the social network is much more complex. In fact, it has uh, this multi-layer structure, this multiplex structure. So uh, uh, with overlapping communities. So th this is this is more or less uh, how it looks like as an illustration. That uh, this is a person, and this person has has um, friends, has family ties, and so on, uh, which are represented at different levels. And then if you project this multiplex onto a, a single layer, then of course you get uh, uh, overlapping communities. And the question then is, uh, can we construct a multiplex structure such that the aggregate network is a Granovetterian. And this is a non-trivial effect uh, or, or a, a question, because uh, if you just take two uh, networks having Granovetterian structure, for example, as uh, uh, created by the model I just told you, um, then, and, and you put them onto each other uh, randomly, basically, then, uh, from a situation on a single layer where you can see this delta F being uh, considerable and there is a Granovetterian structure for sure, uh, this randomness eliminates the Granovetterian structure. So uh, that is not enough. What does that tell us? You should not put the two layers or the several layers onto each other totally random. There must be a correlation between the layers. Uh, and that is uh, uh, incorporated into the model I'm going to uh, describe you in the following way. Instead of uh, uh, having, <coughs> having a totally uh, independent layers, we prescribe that uh, the uh, focal closure is not totally at random, but has a distance dependence in both layers. And that brings in, of course, correlations. That is already a kind of homophily, right? Because, uh, because coming from the same place is already a, a similarity between the person. So this way, a kind of homophily is built in. And this illustration shows you that indeed, uh, if this exponent becomes large, uh, meaning that 
uh, this correlation is very strong, then we start seeing uh, the granovetarian structure also at the projection. And this can be shown uh, also uh, numerically that the delta F, which is zero if alpha is zero, that is exactly the random case, what I uh, told you, and it increases as the alpha increases and, uh, uh, and uh, the, the overlapping uh, character uh, still remains. Uh, the, the community overlap still remains. So I have already started talking about homophily and the next question is whether we can build in homophily in the model. And this is, this is possible. We know that uh, uh, people have many features, uh, gender, age, religion, race, interest, education, and so on. And uh, in order to be able to, uh, to consider several of them, we can, uh, uh, well, th this, is, this is just the, the multiplex uh, due to the different types of attractions. Uh, we, we can, uh, uh, model uh, this uh, homophilic link formation by relying on uh, um, uh, work by Axel Road and then later by uh, Santola and uh, Maxi San Miguel and others uh, who studied uh, a similar problem uh, about uh, cultural diversity. And the model goes as follows you have uh, uh, agents and every agent has f different features and each feature has q, q so-called traits uh, what does that mean that let's say that that one of the features is religion and then uh, uh, in in the category or feature religion one can be catholic protestantic jewish muslim Hindu, whatever, and, and these are uh, summed up to Q. Uh, as a, a simplification, uh, we assume that F and Q, the number of features and the number of traits is the same for everybody. Of course, this is a, a simplification. So, and then uh, what we do is basically the generalization of this weighted social network model I already described you, with uh, the addition that uh, people make links only or reinforce uh, their interaction only if they have overlapping features. And this is uh, for the global attachment, you pick a person and you pick another one, and you make a link only if a randomly picked uh, uh, trait, uh, uh, randomly picked feature uh, is the same in both. And the same is done, uh, or, or a similar uh, procedure is done for triadic closure and reinforcement. So this way we have a model which has all the features I mentioned before. And in addition, it is uh, uh, governed by homophily. So we have these parameters f and q <coughs> by which we can define what is called a feature overlap between nodes i and j. This is just uh, the basically the number of, uh, of uh, agreeing uh, features divided by f. Uh, it is a kind of similarity measure. And for one node, you can define uh, its uh, similarity or um, overlap with its neighbors. Okay. And uh, then it is possible to uh, change one of the parameters, for example, the parameter f, the number of uh, features and see how that influences this overlap, this uh, uh, node overlap property. And we see that this F has a, a considerable impact on this quantity. 
and also <coughs> uh, we can uh, check the number of components or communities uh, a node belongs to. This is the overlapping uh, communities, and this is also very much influenced by the number of uh, uh, features. In fact, by the number of features and also by the number of uh, of traits. So uh, uh, let me illustrate that uh, in, a, in a better way. So if we have a low number of uh, features or a low and a lo low number of traits, then uh, uh, the resulting structure is isolated, segregated communities where there is very large overlap. They are basically the same. Uh, in this case, <coughs> in this case, we have uh, four different features, and uh, all of them seem to be the same in this case. Uh, on the other extreme, if we have a large uh, a number of traits, but the same is true if we have large number of features, uh, we see uh, that this person, uh, uh, of which the uh, the egocentric network is shown, has an overlap with many communities, and the communities themselves are not homogeneous, of course, because there is this overlap that cannot be. So it is a much more colorful and uh, 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 free uh, structure. So if uh, uh, the number of features is small, then communities consist mainly of matching nodes. And if this is very large, then uh, there is a chance, a chance to find matching nodes uh, very little. And therefore, uh, the communities will contain only nodes which have some overlap and not perfect matching. OK, uh, so what do data tell us about this? We have uh, some data where we can uh, study these uh, different features. One is a Hungarian online social network. Uh, the other one is a Slovakian online social network. And we have also the, uh, the uh, mobile phone network where people declare uh, also some of their uh, features. So here you can see that at least these uh, properties, age, gender, location, uh, are present in all three uh, data sets. And here is what we get uh, from uh, the best of all these data sets, which is the Hungarian online social network. And this Hungarian online social network shows you that this is in the category where, where we have a colorful uh, community structure with limited overlap uh, or, or uh, overlap in the, in the uh, features, but uh, considerable overlap in the communities. So, <clears throat> It seems that that uh, it is captured by the model of what we see in the reality. We can also uh, characterize this overlap as a function of the community size, and we see in <coughs> both the Eviv and the Pockets, the Hungarian and the Slovakian network, uh, that there is a, a monotonically increasing part as a function of the uh, community size, which levels off, uh, well, in the pockets case, it goes even down uh, for very large uh, communities. And this could be uh, counterintuitive, perhaps, but how, how can you maintain homogeneity in a very large uh, community? But it turns out that to maintain a large community is a lot of effort, and it is easier if uh, the overlap is, is larger. So uh, one, one should think the other way around, so to speak, that maintaining the community takes effort, which is then uh, 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 helped by the fact that there is a considerable overlap between the interests of the participants. 
So the model uh, uh, shows a, a similar uh, behavior. You have this monotonic uh, part and then it levels off. Okay, so in the remaining few minutes, I would like to tell you about uh, a technical uh, but important detail. So after all, uh, we are studying these uh, communication data and uh, we should ask ourselves, what do they tell us? Is it really what we are interested in? So is it justified uh, to consider them uh, in a way as we do? In fact, usually we have one single communication channel data. We have mobile phone data, or we have Facebook data or Twitter data, but they are not matched. They, uh, we don't know about the, the data of a person in a phone, Facebook, Twitter, and so on, personal meetings and so on. So basically we sample a multiplex, this is a different multiplex from what I was uh, speaking before, a multiplex, uh, this is a multiplex according to, to the communication channels, and we sample it by one layer. And the question is how good this sample reflects the properties of the entire network, which is just a projection. So uh, what are the observations based on these data? Well, this is from Twitter, this is from Facebook. These are uh, uh, Flickr data and opinions and other uh, data. These are all degree distributions. And there is a, an apparent feature in all these figures, namely that they are monotonic. And this contradicts to what we called a uh, uh, stylized fact, where we claim that the degree distribution should be peaked. Okay, this is the mobile call net. Uh, in fact, the monotonic degree distribution cannot be real because it tells us that the distribution has a maximum at degree one. But even persons, with severe autistic syndromes have more than one social links. So it also contradicts the Dunbar's layered picture uh, of, of egocentric networks. So what we conclude about that is that uh, monotonicity results from the sampling. Uh, and that is something we want to understand. And the central problem to that is how people select their communication channels. And we have a model for that. Person I has an affinity to a communication channel C. And then uh, if they want to communicate, they have to choose a channel. And uh, um, our assumption is that uh, uh, this choice will have a probability which depends on uh, these uh, affinities of both persons. One possibility is that we choose this as a minimum of the affinities of both persons. Why minimum? Because this favors the channels with high affinity for both I and J. So based on this, uh, we can put forward a model uh, where what we do is that we take a, a surrogate network, which is the network of the society or the, the model for the projection, and make a sampling according to this channel choice. Of course, we have to assume something about the affinity distribution, which is done in this uh, exponential form just to be able to carry out the uh, uh, calculations analytically. And um, we took this minimum definition and for a, a regular random network, one can do the calculations analytically. For a network with a degree distribution, 
we can take uh, the assumption that uh, that this is just a weighted version uh, weighted with the degree distribution of of this uh, solution what i just showed you so and this is what we get we start from a peaked distribution from a realistic peak distribution and if we do the sampling as described here we get monotonic degree distribution uh, on the right hand side, you can see the original uh, degree distribution of a weighted social network of our model. And uh, uh, this is in yellow. And in blue, you can see the sampled um, degree distribution. So what we see is that indeed, uh, this effect is there. Uh, so we have to be very careful when we generalize observations from uh, single communication channels. Okay, I would like to summarize uh, what I have tried to tell you. Well, uh, a commonplace ICT data foster studies of the network of social interactions. Uh, it is possible to prove uh, hypotheses of social scientists, which uh, seem to be very difficult without these data. Modeling should rely on a social theory and the database observations. Uh, the simple assumptions on link formation and strength reinforcement leads to granulatory structure. This is the simple weighted social network model I, I showed you. Uh, if you have a multiplex, then layers have to be correlated in order to arrive at a uh, at an aggregate granulatory structure. Homophilic interactions with multiple features naturally lead to a, a multiplex. And uh, this uh, structure of the multiplex uh, depends very much on the number of features. And you may ask, uh, does that make any sense that we consider the number of features as a variable? Uh, everybody has a huge number of features. Well, I think it does because uh, uh, there are circumstances when although we all have many, many features, only a few matter. And in that case, you see the segregation effect. If people care only about the religion of others, there is a segregation. So I think uh, in that spirit, uh, this, this uh, uh, model, we put forward has a real uh, message. So finally, I would like to show you the uh, publications which this uh, talk was based on. And in red, you can see my collaborators whom I would like to thank. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Janos. Thank you very much. This was, 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 was very clear, uh, you know, even uh, you made an effort to make it clear also to non-specialists non -specialist in, the, in the field, as I am. I'm sure that uh, there are questions from the audience. If you have questions, please your, raise, uh, raise your hands. Yes, Luca, please. Luca has a question. Yeah, so thank you very much for the talk. It was uh, very, very interesting and uh, provoking. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I have a first question. Um, so you mentioned this uh, Dunbar number. This, uh, it makes a lot of sense uh, in uh, old style interactions, let's say, between people. In my life, I can only meet so many of them, uh, etc. Now, social networks have made very, very easy to have a lot of different connections. Now in Italy, we call them influencers. So people will really reach dozens of thousands of others. Uh, how does uh, the presence of this influencer change the, uh, your results, particularly in relation to the segregation uh, you observed uh, uh, when modeling homophilic information? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, very, very good question. Actually, this problem has been studied. And uh, 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 there is no 
uh, consensus about this. But um, I would like to refer to the introduction where I emphasize that I'm interested in socially relevant uh, interactions. And of course, if an influencer meets his or her 2070s uh, friend at an airport, they won't even recognize each other. So this is not, this is definitely not a socially relevant uh, interaction. On the other hand, one can assume that uh, uh, these technologies uh, are helpful in uh, increasing our resources. Uh, you may think that managing a relationship online is much easier than uh, going to the next village and visiting your friend. Uh, and this is true. So maybe that our capacity increases uh, due to the technological possibilities. Uh, however, and I think that uh, our uh, experience uh, with COVID and online meetings, which this is just a part of it, mm. uh, also uh, supports what I'm going to say that the depth of the relationships suffers from that. So the, the, we are possibly observing a, a shift from uh, quality to quantity. But as I said, this is, this is an open question and uh, there is uh, research on that. Okay, thank you. There are two more questions. So one from uh, Shul Moran, please, Shul. Yes, <clears throat> um, about, okay, I have a remark from, um, first from about the influencers. I would say that also um, like the influencers call uh, the people watching them, they are communities. So somehow, uh, an influencer creates somehow also a community within it. And uh, another remark is like, um, you talk about socially relevant relationship and um, you track them on phone, mail, Facebook, or, but usually, for example, if you live with someone, uh, you don't talk on, with him on Facebook, nor, or other, neither on the phone, neither on mail, because you say everything orally. So you cannot track this kind of uh, relationship. And this is usually the most relevant relationship you have, the, the one that you have in the real life. So how do you do with this? This is a perfect remark and it uh, is just underlining what I said last, namely that when we pick one channel we may make a big mistake if we consider the data stemming from one channel as a representative for the entire network. In fact, what we saw is that uh, uh, there are distortions, artifacts due to this, uh, already at the level of a degree distribution, which is a fundamental property of a network. Uh, so you are perfectly right that, uh, that uh, we, we do not get a proper, uh, uh, we do not get a proper uh, description of the entire socially relevant uh, uh, network. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we in science do always the best we can. And, uh, and this is the best we can, but we have to be aware of these uh, this possible uh, traps. I fully agree. Okay, thank you, Maria, please. Okay, yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for this uh, very interesting, fascinating talk. Quite interdisciplinary, I have to say. Um, <clears throat> just a curiosity. So. Um, in your presentation, the word models, a connection between, for example, different individuals with respect to the same feature, uh, but also, <clears throat> as you said, the spot, it is possible that the same person is related to different fields. So I was imagining this one as some kind of path because we can connect um, individuals 
uh, with respect uh, okay, we okay focusing on the same feature and connecting different people, but at the same time, the same person can be related to different fields, for example, different interests. Okay, uh, I'm wondering if it could be possible to build up path and this way mathematically thinking of uh, a structural groupoids, for example, where we have these categories of path. Um, where each transformation can be invertible, so we can go uh, both ways. And for a um, more conceptual side, if we can build up some kind of narrative, because we might investigate how two people became in touch with respect the subject, and how the same person might um, have um, become interested uh, to different topics. Yes. Uh I'm not sure that I fully understand the question, but I, I try and you correct me if not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, of course, the model is, uh, is a strong simplification, no doubt. I mean, we, we don't have this historical aspect and uh, many other uh, things. Uh, but um, uh, what we do have is this aspect of uh, uh, many different features, many different fields of interest. And uh, that is already uh, enough to, uh, to show a lot of uh, features which, is, which are similar to our observations. So I would say uh, we have a, an opposite attitude to what you request, uh, namely, uh, we try to do the simplest possible thing, which we know is far from being complete and uh, we ignore a lot of important aspects, but we are interested in what comes out if we do this oversimplified model. And to our satisfaction, we observe that this makes sense and it leads to results uh, comparable to the observations. We, we don't think that this is, uh, this is a complete answer to the question. I'm not sure that I, I captured what you, you wanted to hear. No, thank you. So actually, yeah, that was actually the, yes, the opposite. So rather than build up, building up more structure, you are interested in grabbing information from uh, what we already have. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. There is one more question by Guglielmo Beretta, please. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I've noticed that you mentioned that uh, in your model, uh, there is uh, some uh, deletion, deletion of nodes uh, which have been considered. And uh, I wonder if there is also uh, some spawning of new nodes taken into account. And uh, if this, uh, if this uh, is also mentioned, it also appears, uh, uh, well, I would like to know uh, if there is a relation between uh, how uh, new uh, spawned nodes get uh, uh, new features, basically. Thank you. This is a very important question, and it uh, shows that I, I didn't uh, tell you properly all the details of the model. Uh, actually, when I am speaking about node deletion, at the same time, there is a new node born oh, and, and because that is what assures us the stationarity, what I mentioned. Oh, um, okay. so this is, of course, uh, again, an oversimplification. As I mentioned, there are several ways uh, how links can be removed from a network. They can fade away, they can be broken up and, uh, and nodes can be removed. And in fact, we did study these different possibilities and there are slight differences in the outcome. But of course, in such a talk, I couldn't uh, go into all the details. Uh, so this, this is very important and, and uh, leads, as I said, to slightly different results, but the overall picture doesn't uh, change. Um, okay, so basically uh, to keep uh, some kind of a stationary system, uh, when one node is deleted, so yes. it's uh, basically cloned 
that's the yes. idea so yes, and really you know you, that with the same features appears you can also see that uh, uh, that um, all the all the links of a node are uh, eliminated well for the for the uh, for the uh, homophilic model uh, we generated new features also randomly Oh, so oh, okay. New, yeah, newborn uh, individual has new features. Also. So it's uh, and uh, the new features are not dependent on the current distribution of features. No, no. So there is a basic so random. It's taken okay. from the same distribution. The features don't change in our model. Okay, okay. So the yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for the answer. Okay, thank you. I don't see any other raised hands. So it, my, my impression is that, uh, you know, this, uh, this method are very powerful method uh, and the social science are, are here to stay. And I think we will see more because the, the, the number of applications are really skyrocketing. And uh, so we will see Janos uh, again uh, soon, but uh, for the time being, let, uh, please join me in thanking again. Uh, this is a virtual clap on, uh, on, on behalf of the whole community. And uh, thank you very much, Janos. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for 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 attending this this uh, this seminar. And I see you next time. Thank you, Akina. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye.